What's up, fellas? We back with another edition of the video mailbag. We got a big weekend coming up with Donair versus Nishioka and Rios versus Alvarado. I think these fights should be on World Championship Boxing and not Boxing After Dark. You know, we're getting a little bit of a discount in the bonus with these fights, but nevertheless, it is what it is. I usually don't do video mailbag breakdowns of fights that are not what people consider to be huge fights but i personally consider these to be action-packed huge fights at the top level and i'm very very intrigued by both fights let's start with the alvarado Rios fight Rios fight i'm sorry i've been going back and forth about this fight alvarado seems to be the sexy pick because he's perceived as the bigger man he's fought at 147 he's actually you know a tweener between 47 and 40 and he's kind of shrunk down to 40 where Rios was a big 35 we don't know how he's going to do at 40 Rios has been struggling a little bit I've talked about this openly about how Rios has struggled so much to make weight I think it damaged him in his last two fights he, he looks terrible at the weigh in looks like it's kind of cutting through his skin his skin is like yellowish you know that kind of scares me I think when a guy loses that much fluid in his body you know it does something to his organs you know hopefully Rios is a different fighter at 140 pounds and hopefully shrinking down in weight didn't bother him so much and let's remember he didn't make weight for, for I think two of those fights and he was still struggling so I think he came in 37 if I'm not mistaken or 38 I don't know the exact number that he weighed then but he was still struggling so 40 may be a little much for him to get to you know, so we have to take that into consideration. I was trying to find some footage of Rio sparring to see how he was looking in, in camp. Although in camp, you don't know what weight a guy is. People don't realize it. You know, these guys, 135-pound fighter, you'll never see him spar at 135 pounds. The last time he may spar, he may be 141, 142 pounds, and then they'll cut it out and shake off the last part of the uh, weight that he has to do to make weight. The last week before the fight you know that's one thing people don't understand so i was trying to figure out before i made my pick you know what was going on with rios physically so now i'm just going to assume from my sources that both guys are 100 percent and rios has been looking really good and from that assumption i'm gonna go with brandon rios I know a lot of people are taking Alvarado, but I'm going to go with Brandon Rios. The reason why I'm going to go with Rios is because I think Alvarado can fight on the inside, but I don't think he defends himself well on the inside. I think Rios is a better defensive fighter than people give him credit for. He blocks a lot of shots with his forearms, his elbows. He keeps his head chucked down, his chin tucked down, and he just... He really, 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 he really has a science to his madness, you know. He's not just this blind, raging fighter that just walks in and just tries to just knock your head off. Reels those devastating short shots. His uppercut is money. He hits you with a right hand behind your ear. He really tears you up on the inside, you know. And if I had a war, if there was a war between superpowers and two countries, and one country had like a shell over it where you could bomb them and you can get through. But a lot of the things it would deflect. And the other country had a big arsenal full of weapons. But every time you threw a bomb at them, you hit them. I probably would say that the country with the shell over it will win. You know, guys like Julio Cesar Chavez, guys like Roberto Duran. And I'm not saying Brandon Rios is on his level. But those, it's hard to beat those kind of guys in wars of attrition because they're doing clever things to keep you from hitting them clean and keep you from hitting them often. Now, Brandon Rios is no defensive master, but he knows what he's doing. He's not getting hit clean with a lot of those punches. A lot of those punches are going over his head. They're hitting him on top of the head. He has a huge head. He's a strong kid. And... I'm just not sure that Alvarado knows enough to beat Rios. The one thing that I think Alvarado does have a chance, and I want you guys to make a note of this during the fight. I remember Gotti, Gotti war fights. Although they were wars, Gotti was the more mobile fighter. 
So therefore, at times, he would kind of out fight box Ward. And I thought it gave him a big advantage. To me, I think that Alvarado was a little bit more mobile than Rios in the center of the ring. And I think he can have an advantage there, believe it or not, and sort of outbox Rios in spots. Rios is very, very comfortable in the trenches, in the pocket. He sort of contorts his body in a way to get close to you. He's like this. He, he's 5'8", he's, he's but he gets down in about 5'5". Five, five. He's always like this, just to close distance and get to you. That's, that's Rios' comfort zone. So, I don't want to make you guys think the fight's going to be a stinker. Because I definitely don't think that. But... Alvarado has a, a a better than average chance if he could just become more mobile, sort of like Gotti did with Ward. If you look at those fights, when Gotti had a lot of success, he was very mobile with Ward. When they were in the trenches, you know, it was it was anybody's fight. But nevertheless, I'm just gonna pick Rios. I think Alvarado got hit so much against Bradis Prescott with everything in the kitchen sink, uppercuts and overhand rights and you know, Prescott didn't do anything clever. He just walked to him and just and just hit him with everything. And I don't know if Rios is the puncher that Prescott is for one shot, but Rios tears you to pieces with those little shots, man. He does. I mean, he does those. those he's the kind of puncher that his punches stick with you. So I'm gonna pick Rios by. decision or late stoppage you know i think that alvarado has a lot of staying power i can see a cut or something like that opening up and you know somebody may step in them but i'm gonna say reels just kind of just just does something to him man where the punches you know it looks like alvarado is getting over but reels is just hitting him with that nasty stuff on the on the inside and in his heart and in his liver and he just kind of just breaks him down to a point where Alvarado don't even know he's fighting with blind rage. And the next thing you know, he's going to punch and he's, and he's throwing arm punches. I just think that Rio's being exposed to the excellent sparring out there in California. His amateur pedigree, I just think he has an advantage. And technically in the war, the guy who can sort of not take too much, that's the guy I'm going to go with. In a fight of the year type of fight, of course. The next fight is Nonito Denair. You guys know he's one of my favorites against uh, Nishioka. This guy, Nishioka, can fight, man. He has a straight left hand that reminds me, and this it sounds crazy, reminds me of Manny Pacquiao's. He really does shoot a straight left hand, man, from the southpaw stance. Nonito Denair can be hit. He has great reflexes and great reaction time, and I think he's been fighting a little bit with blind aggression lately. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Nonito got dropped this fight. But I don't think he's going to get stopped. I think he's the, uh, a, a special fighter. I think that he has so much length and ability to cover ground. It's really odd. I think Nonito's maybe 5'6". But when I look at him fight, he always looks like that he can cover more ground than any opponent that he's in the ring with. He looks like he kind of dwarfs his opponent with his length. I don't know if he has long legs or long arms or whatever, but it's really odd. I think Nonito knocks Nishioka out. I think he gets back on, you know, gets a knockout. He hasn't scored a knockout in a couple of fights. I think he knocks Nishioka out. I think Nishioka punches, but I think his head is always on line after he punches. I think Nonito kind of when he throws a right hand against the southpaw he'll square up and he'll sort of throw the right hand and then bring his foot up and square up and bring a left hand over he has that down pack i was saying that chavez you know he does that move also james tony did the move where he knocked michael nunn out i think nonito is so gifted athletically and offensively with his reaction time and his ability to see an opening and then react nonito's mind is so quick I mean, he's he's one of the sharpest fighters in the history of boxing. Literally, we're watching one of the sharpest guys in the history of boxing. Nonito's reaction time from the time that he sees you give him an opening and the time that he delivers a power shot is, it's like Robinson Hearns like. You know, seriously, Nonito Denier offensively is a hell of a fighter. I think he's going to knock this guy out, but I think he's going to get dropped. I think he's going to get up. 
and he's gonna knock this guy out in a brutal type of knockout within the first six rounds. I think it's gonna be early, blazing and brutal. That's that that's my call for this fight. I do want to point out this. I'm not on here to endorse boxing gloves or anything like that. You know, none of the companies are cutting me checks. But you no know, needle denier wears the uh, Everlast Mexican cuts, and those gloves are really soft. I try these gloves on for my fighters, you know, before the fight. And you know, I'm not going to say which gloves I would tell him to pick. And Everlast does make some great gloves, but I saw a picture of him, and he had like blood just recently on one of his, on his, uh, on his wraps. And he, you know, and I and I saw a, after one of his fights he had, and I'm like, this guy punches too hard to be wearing those soft, flim, flimsy gloves like that. You know, Everlast makes other gloves that are that that much more supportive of the wrist, and they give you a better, harder, firmer cushion when you fight. You know, I think that you know that could be a problem with Nonito in the future because the kid puts everything into his punches. And when you're wearing them soft, flimsy gloves like that, I can only imagine it's going to you know, a fighter's hand bleeding after a fight is, I mean, something is, is causing this, you know, that's, that, that's kind of odd, you know, to get a guy whose hand is physically bleeding after the fight, it's one thing for it to be a little sore, but to actually bleed, you know, you may, you may want to wear a different kind of glove, so barring the hand, hand trouble, and, and, and these guys training camps and things like that, they're very important, that's why I look for little things like that, and I definitely saw you know, a picture of Nonito, and I saw his hand, and I saw, like, a pinkish substance. It looked like blood to me on his hand wraps, and I'm like, wow, you know, I've been noticing what kind of gloves he wears for his last couple of fights, and, and don't get me wrong, he knocked out Montiel with, the, with those same gloves, but the problem is when you're hitting the guy over and over and over throughout a fight, and you're throwing six, seven hundred punches when you're not getting any support with your hands, you got to have some really strong wrists and some really strong hands that keep punching how he punches, because Nonito Denaire tries to kill you with his punches. But nevertheless, those are my pick. I'm going with pedigree. I'm not making any sexy picks. Um, uh, Brandon Rios and Nonito Denaire will carry the day. See you guys later. Uh, hit me up on Boxing Talk, www.boxingtalk.com. And you can email me at thebreadman, that's D-A-B-R-E-A-D-M-A-N-25 at hotmail.com. Uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Breadman Boxing. See you guys later.